everyone and welcome to Sunday Politics live on China's television. I'm Sean Okimele in Abuja, the nation's capital. Let's give you some updates on some of the security stories that we are following for you right here on China's television, which, of course, uh, will be some of the premise of some of the conversation we'll be having tonight. Offices of the Department of State Services, the DSS, and that of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, are being uh, uh, set ablaze in Inewi, a number of states. A group of armed men are said to have carried out the attack after driving around the commercial town shooting sporadically. And in the northern part of the country, two soldiers are said to have been killed while several others injured in an attack on Kagara local government area of Naji State. And in Kaduna State, two people were being killed, uh, been killed in fresh attack by bandits in Zango Kataf local government area of Kaduna State. Well, last week, on the floor of the Senate, um, uh, some senators and their counterparts in the House of Representatives have called on President Buhari to declare the bandits terrorists. And the means of all these was the nation's 61st independence celebration, where there are key issues bordering on our existence and nationhood. China Salvation made leadership a prime focus in the conversation we had on the Independence Day, and in view of the current situation in the country, we should further that conversation. And I'm being joined tonight by Senator Ibrahim Bukachua. Uh, Adamu's apologies. Uh, Senator Adamu Bukachua, representing Bochi North in the Senate. Thank you so much, distinguished Senator, for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. Let's begin the conversation around Nigeria's independence. Yeah. You were very much around. You were active. You were. You knew. You saw the scenario when the the colonialists left the shores of Nigeria and officially we gained our independence from uh, the British rule. Sixty-one years of nationhood. How do you or what? How do you say we are fed? Well, um, there are so many ways. Look, uh, for the angles rather from where uh, we will look at our development from 1960. Um, if we look at uh, physical development, I think we haven't done well, uh, too badly because so many things from 1960 have changed in this country. You know, of course, the British left us with a good railway system, but by... 20, no, in fact, by 1999, uh, there was no functioning railway at all in the country. And uh, I'll blame that on, in the, from the Second Republic to the Third Republic, which haven't paid much attention to railway uh, development. And in fact, they allowed it to, to get, you know, to rot away, and uh, there is, uh, we have even almost forgotten about it until Buhari administration tried to revive it from 2015. And uh, you can see so many uh, cities are connected now with the railway, and the contract that has been signed definitely will give Nigeria. Uh, good railway system by 2023. Mm. And, uh, well, economically, I would say we haven't done badly either, except for the fact that we truly misused our resources when petrol was selling for $140 per barrel. And we misused that, those resources. And uh, as such, we are now paying for it that we have to even borrow in order to uh, finance our development and in fact, indeed, in order to balance our budget. So it's a mixture of... Yeah, you, you, you can tell us because uh, uh, stories are very much aware of what happened not only in the 60s but also in the 70s down to uh, sometimes uh, in the mid-70s how much a British pound exchanged for the Naira at a time. Well, at some point, uh, in fact, if you end uh, about 120 pounds, that's just about 60 Naira mm. at a time. 
Am I, am, am I right? You are absolutely right because uh, from 1960 to even the late 70s, the exchange rate between the pound and the dollar um, and the naira and the dollar and the naira was quite good because I remember dollar when it became uh, 22 naira to the dollar there was hue and cry in this country that why should the exchange rate be so bad because just two three years back it was uh, two, two point eight or twenty eight or less than that, in fact, between naira and dollar. At one point, they were at par. In fact, at the beginning, the dollar has more value. I mean, naira has more value. Uh, of course, we were using pound then. Yeah. Before we changed to dollars. I mean, to naira. Naira. Pound was, has more value, Nigerian pound has more value than the dollar, than the pound itself. But since we changed from uh, pound to naira in the 70s, the story began to change. So who do you blame this on? But now, if you look at, because I know you are a senator of the APC, uh, when the APC came into power, you look at it, it's about in the range of... Uh, um, 293 in that range, in that region. In fact, but now, was, at the parallel it, it market... It was 150. Absolutely. Yes. But at the moment, and the parallel market is way above 500 and exchange the dollar in exchange to, to the Naira. I Are can, you happy with that? No, nobody would be happy with that. But the question is, you know, we used to export a lot. But now, it's even more difficult to export from Nigeria into foreign country than to import. There are so many uh, stumbling blocks along the line. So many exporters in Nigeria for agricultural primary products, um, some other manufactured or value-added products, they are still wanted out there. But because of the problem of exportation in the ports, in the airports, and with the custom, with so many other agencies, some exporters just decide to call it quits. And they just give up. They don't want to import, uh, export anymore. So any country that doesn't export, they only import, their currency will not be uh, of good value. That is the reason. And uh, uh, we're trying to really get this even out because there's so many things. When you want to export, let's say, um, primary goods like sesame seed, which is in demand all over the world, that is exporting of non-oil products you know if you go to the from your uh, factory where you clean it and package it to the port to the point where you do all the documentation for export it's a big 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 problem so for the, for the exporter yeah i mean so quickly uh, i'd like to get some quick reaction from you on the state of the nation vis-a-vis -vis the, the independence celebration, 61 years. Mm. At a time, I don't know where you were, whether you were in the country or schooling abroad or whether, I mean, I don't know where you were in 1960, but I know you, everyone, every Nigerian at the time, even the, uh, the, 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 the toddler at the time, they had a vision, they had a dream about uh, a Nigeria that is, was being birthed at the time about how big and how industrious the nation was going to be. What did you envisage 60 years ago about Nigeria? Well, um, first of all, uh, at independence in 1960, I was just finishing my secondary school education. And uh, of course, we had uh, high hopes that uh, when the British leave, 
we will develop our country our own way, not in line with British tradition. And uh, I thought we had started. The First Republic started very well until politics took over the aspirations and the yearnings of the people. Everything became political, you know? Uh, the Azikiwes, the Avolovos, the, the, the Sadaunas and the Tafabali, they couldn't agree. The politics was more in their minds than uh, uh, the development. Them. I don't blame it on them. What do you blame it on? The, because you had an aspiration. I blame it on politics. And the politicians? Well, some of the politicians. Because those who are all. playing politics. No, all the time. let me tell you. Um, after 1960, uh, Aulo was uh, in charge in the Western region, if you remember. Yeah, he was the premier. And Zik, with his NCNC, they were very strong in the West. But Aulo chased Zik out of Western region because he was NCNC. He was not uh, age. Action group, he wasn't. Chased him out politically. Politically, though. yes. And Zik had to go back to the east and uh, let uh, NCNC set up a government, which they did and ruled. So you see, it, there was no national cohesion at that time between the politicians. Is there, is there, still, is there national cohesion now? Well, this is what was supposed to be since we reverted to presidential system of government. And if you, for, if you don't forget, during the regime of uh, Gawan, during the civil war, and even before, the Gawan regime set up uh, federal colleges yeah. or unity colleges. Unity schools. The idea, yeah. these schools, the idea was to let a, a student, a secondary school student from Newi to go and study in Maiduguri or in Sokoto, and the Sokoto guy, uh, student, should go and study in Enugu, so that the idea of one Nigeria would sink in their minds. Same with the concept of NYC. Exactly. That was he, he also studied So, what, but the, the national but cohesion that you said was lost at was the time. Was lost. Is this because, is it present now? Because the people at that time, I remember when parents go and bribe NYSC, to send their own children to their own states. I mean, is that fair? The whole idea was defeated in that case. But uh, this thing went on for some time. But I remember, but I had a cousin who was posted to um, a journey on NYSC to um, this state, uh, the newest Southeast state. Ebony. Ebony. That's right. He was posted there. And I gave him uh, my car, uh, a station wagon Pujo, to take him there to see. And I, he was accompanied by some of his uh, cousins as well. He went there and when they, they, they go to the state capital, two days after, they were posted to the, a local government. And he told me to reach the local government at that time, he had to hire a bicycle to carry him with his suitcase to the local government headquarters. There was no other transportation. So he went there. And when he arrived there, it was time for Zuhur prayers, prayers in the afternoon. So when he asked for a place to do his evolution and the rest of it, do you know, the whole village surrounded him, watching him pray. It was something very strange, you know? But it wouldn't happen now, would it? Everywhere now has been... Uh, 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 change into muni a municipal area and uh, everybody is, is knows each other. But politics, you know, things never got that bad as it is now before 
the 2023 election approach. So politics is really dealing with Nigerians and Nigeria itself. Up to now? Up to this moment. But, I mean, I was asking the question of a national cohesion. You yeah. say it was not there now. No, it then, no. No, then was it, is it Is it here now? No, the thing has gotten worse. It's worse now? Yes. How can a country that were singing the same national anthem that we had, and then now they say, no, we, we, we don't want to be Nigerians anymore. How? Why? What do you think is causing that? Politics. Is it politics? It is. During the military era, did you have such a thing? No, during the military era, nobody was thinking. The only thing is, during the military era, there was an attempt by Ojuku to break away from Nigeria and form a country of his perception called Biafra. So, and he was fought to stand still. And he himself realized the folly in the whole thing. So, I mean, what do you make of the agitations that we are saying? Uh, it's not only in the Southeast that we are hearing this kind of agitation. It's, it's now widespread. Where is it? Is there, everybody is only uh, agitating so that maybe some concession for presidential ticket could be made. You think that is at the center of I it? I believe that is the center. Of the but if, if it is at the center of it, how, what solution, what, what do you suppose the solution is? Let's come back to reality. What is the reality? The reality is elections are supposed to be fought on the platform of politics. Right? And the be each party will present its best candidate to the people so that let them vote for whoever they want to vote for. But if we think we will only elect a president based on his ethnicity or his uh, tribe or his, uh, um, which, his degree or something, we'll never get it right. I, I was speaking to you because I was not born in the 60s. No, you were not, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm a student of history also, I've learned a lot. I've, I mean, I've read a lot about the Nigerian, the Nigeria of pre-independence mm -hmm. and the post-independence. I've seen a lot of issues that have come up. And the question is, there are a lot of countries who started way after us. Yes. They, they got the independence after us. In fact, some of them picked up their lives and development mm -hmm. way after us. Yes. Some of them, we, we in fact helped, but they are way ahead of us economically. Yes. That is true. That is true. Where do you see Nigeria naturally? Well, look. Or, or, or how can we pick it up? Well, we dropped the ball, isn't it? Aye, we, yeah, are we, did. we are, we are let, behind let in the shadow. We are. And let me tell you. Nigerians, we have, we have to come back, like I said, uh, to the drawing board. You see, I have never seen such indiscipline in any developed na developing nation like you have in Nigeria. Mm. There is so much indiscipline. And is, no, is it from the beginning or no, when did it start? No, it started soon after independence. You see... And is it caused it, by the politicians or the politics? Well, it's it become part of our body politic now. People don't want to obey the laws, simple laws. They don't want to obey. I mean, have you ever observed traffic? There is one way, there is another way going and coming. So there's and a breakdown in value system? Not only in value system, but in our, our psyche of uh, everybody being, not being above the law. So the question Everybody is, thinks he can, he can bring Senator, the law and get away with it. How do we fix this? That's the major problem. The, 61 years, we, a 61 year old now yes. is probably a grandfather. Maybe, or mostly, most likely. Yeah. But let me tell you, we have to start by not point, pointing, accusing fingers to each other, but look at ourselves inwardly and see what we are doing wrong. And I can bet you, Every Nigerian knows what he is doing wrong. But can we admit and jettison those things and then uh, uh, move in the right direction? 
<laughs> but I mean, uh, Senator, would you agree with those who say that leadership is our major problem? No. If you say leadership is, from where does the leadership come? Is it not from among us? Have we had the best of leadership in this country? That's not the issue. Well, are we, Senator? No, but the issue is, I mean, the leadership must come from the populace, from the people. And are we behaving the right way? That is the issue. So is the followership that is a problem for you? No, the, I mean, we can't have uh, a leadership from amongst ourselves who are not disciplined enough, who are not honest enough, you know, as a country, as well, a people. Let me put you on the spot, Senator. If you are given the project and the task of fixing Nigeria now as a contractor to fix it, where would you start from? I would start by asking every Nigerian to admit that there are things he himself or she is doing wrong. After that, what would be your after next After that, step? then we follow our laws. I mean, there are laws in this country. We, we are supposed to be lawmakers, right? Mm -hmm. And anything uh, we do is supposed to be followed and accepted. But I tell you, Nigerians don't want to be law-abiding. So it is not the leadership that is a problem. It is Nigerians and the fellowship. But yes, the Nigerians, you know, I tell you, leadership comes from amongst us. So if all of us have some guilt somewhere, so where do you think they create another, other Nigerians to lead? So let me, let me also ask you, because you're a political leader too, and your party, the APC, made so much promise that they're going to fix. But you, your party listed so many problems that but, Nigeria had, Senator. Yes, I know. I mean, if, I, yeah. if I may land on that question, <laughs> you, you listed a lot of problems. It's six years and over now since your party took over. Mm -hmm. Is this the place, Nigeria, that, that you, you sold to Nigeria, at the point where you said you were going to take us? No, it's not. So is it a but, failure? No, it's not. It's a collective failure. No, yes. but I mean, but, I, let me premise it look, again. If you, Senator, have, to, if, if you, you talk, have to lead, Senator, there if, must if be willing, me, f willing followers. Six years ago, if you told me that you're taking me from Lagos uh -huh. to Abuja, yes. and you have not taken me there, yes. whose fault is it? It could be your fault too, because you refuse to come along. Okay. It could be your fault too. So in this case now, let, let's bring it in a practical form. Yes. So your party made promises to Nigerians. Yes. Have you delivered on those promises? Let me tell you, a party is made up of people, right? And you can see where uh, people were in the PDP, for instance, and there are some in Abga, and the majority were in uh, APC, right? But you have seen, when APC says we will do this, and you see some die-hard PDP people leaving their party, decamping to uh, APC, just because they want to belong. Is that the wrong thing? It's wrong. So every, so every, they have every, no every politician needs you to mean stay they, where they, they are? They have no principle? Why did they join PDP in the first instance? Why did they now cross over to APC in this, uh, uh, you know, when they find it convenient? Well, Senator, you have, ne oh, you have not always been in APC. Myself? Yeah. I had been, first, let me tell you, I was a product of Mala Aminu Kano and Saadu Zungu from secondary school days. And everybody knows them. They were liberal people, they were dynamic people, they were all teachers. Now, when I finished school, and uh, I could then join a political party, I belonged to the NEPU, Northern People's uh, uh, Party. So, after that, after a coup, NEPU was proscribed, and all the other parties were also proscribed. So, and I have to join another party that has been formed. And believe me, uh, I joined NPN 
after I voluntarily retired from service. So I joined NPL, and I was there until the coup that also proscribed NPL. So I wasn't changing parties per se. Well, in the Fourth Republic, in the, since 1998, Yes, in the first of, uh, fourth, fourth, Republic. fourth Republic, I tell you, 99, or rather in 98, I was a member, in fact, I was a founding member of PDP. Myself, Abakarimi, and some other friends, we went to Jos to meet Solomon Allah mm -hmm. in his house to ask him not to just stay there, let him come out, let's form a group and then develop a political association which will later become a political party. And we did that. He accepted and we went and met other uh, political class and former military uh, people who have retired uh, who wanted to be politicians. We met them and behold, PDP was formed. I contested on the platform of PDP in 1999, and I won my election. But then when Obasanjo came, I saw his demeanor, I saw the way he was handling the country, and I didn't like it. I challenged him openly, and I worked against him in the assembly. I was in the House of Representatives then, and even then I was the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, because of my previous experience, of course. So I wasn't, after 2023, from 1999, I said I am done with even politics, not to talk of APC or PDP or whatever. APC was not in existence at the time. So that's, I kept my... Uh, my promise to myself that I wouldn't contest any other election. But in 2023, because in, we are in search of a credible leader, so we went and brought out Muhammad Buhari, general then, from retirement, and we urged him to delve into politics. So you also came out of retirement? Yes. So that's how you came back into the APC? No, before APC, we formed from the, the, the CPC. CPC. So, I mean, uh, a lot of Nigerians can get to the tra uh, trajectory. I just wanted to, you to emphasize the fact that, or talk about the reasons why you say people should stay in their political parties because yes, of ideology. Uh, if they don't have any ideology, well, they can be free to do anything. It looks like they are just looking for greener pastures, that's all. So those and, who and are I don't, the, I don't anybody respect, would affect. I don't respect such people. Hmm. Believe me. Okay, let's wrap up now, Senator. On the floor, your colleagues are asking that the president should declare that bandits terrorist. What's your opinion? What's your stand on that? Well, you're just giving them their right name. They should be declared terrorists. After all, what is a terrorist? And what is a bandit? We gave them the name bandit probably to just subpedal and uh, don't let them be internationally recognized as, um, as terrorists because terrorism in the international arena is regarded as the most heinous crime that any group of people can engage in. So I think it's right. They, they are terrorists in reality. What else are they? Anybody that doesn't allow people to, to, to stay in, uh, rest in peace, what is he? Just for his own, uh, you know, the bandits, the kidnappers, they're all terrorists. And they should be declared same. They should be declared same so that whatever country, whichever country they go to, will be regarded as such. They should be. Senator Adamu Bukachua, such a pleasure having you on the program today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, 
Let's take a break now, everyone. When we return, we'll get more perspectives on the state of the nation. And up next, Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, will be joining us and we'll be discussing how to chart the way forward for Nigeria. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's pick up the conversation where we left it off. Um, I'm being joined now by Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who is joining us from Ikeja area of Lagos. Thank you so much, Senior Advocate, for your time tonight. Let me begin the conversation by getting to know your view. Because Thank you very much, Chen. We are still in the mood of the 61st Independence Celebration in Nigeria. Um, would you say, so far, so good? No, I would say, so far, so bad, uh, in the sense that Nigeria has refused to get it right. Uh, whereas in 1960, Nigeria was ahead of many countries uh, in Asia including Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the rest of them. Today, some of those countries have front jumped. They've left us as a third world country, and they have metamorphosed into, you know, uh, first world. So, uh, for the majority of our people, 1960 provided an opportunity to start all over again. But, unfortunately, the nationalist politicians who took over the reins of power from the British, from the British colonial regime, did not decolonize the country, did not decolonize the psyche of our people. And all of them retain the colonial structures, the laws, ordinances were cheap simply changed to acts of parliament. The institutions were left intact. I mean, take the police, you know, it was written as Nigerian police force, not Nigerian police service. The Nigerian army and other security agencies continued to perform the role they were performing under the colonial regime, i.e. these were forces set up to intimidate and harass our people, extort levies and taxes from them. And that has continued up to now. So the question of development, uh, 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 the moment the political class embraced the development paradigm of colonialism or of imperialism, we got it wrong. Uh, 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 the late first president of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, had said in 1957, let African countries obtain their flag independence and other things will follow. By the time he himself realized that the colonial route of development was not going to help Africa, it was rather late. And that was when Kwame Nkrumah wrote his, you know, Magnus Opus, Neo-Colonialism, the last stage of imperialism. And what happened in a place like Nigeria? All the structures of colonialism were left intact. And so I, I was were not quite surprised. When President Muhammad Bari in his broadcast yesterday was thanking the British for uniting us, you know, and I was wondering, you know, uh, where that is coming from. Because the colonial regime engage in dividend imperial taxes, divide and rule, in order to satisfy imperialism. So Nigeria was not established for the development of our country. Nigeria was set up to facilitate the brutal exploitation of our human and natural resources after the slave trade. Colonialism, you know, was practiced for about 100 years. So what you will have expected in 1960 was a radical departure from 
the colonial route that has led to the underdevelopment of our country. Unfortunately, when uh, adventurers, military adventurers in politics step in in 1966, the situation became worse. The country that was trying to practice federalism was turned into a unitary one. You had Nigeria was run like a regiment. You had the commander in chief in Lagos or later in Abuja, whose decrees were binding on everybody. These guys did not allow the country to develop. So our country again was arrested. I mean, our development was arrested. And the situation became worse in 1986 or thereabout when the Ibrahim Babangida Junta embraced the IMF World Bank Imposed Structural Adjustment Program, embarking the retrenchment of workers, commenced the sale of the assets of the country to members of the ruling class, institutionalized corruption. So other regimes since then have built on such fraudulent economic if and political paradigm. And that is the basis of the, uh, the crisis of development in our country. Yeah, if, if I may follow up on the first question that I asked you, uh, for someone like me, I was born in the era where uh, Up Nepa uh, started. I mean, uh, I, I, I've not known 24-7 power supply since I was born. And uh, for someone like me also, we'll be glad that I paid about 90 Naira as school fees, as tuition fee, when I was in the university. But because I attended at the Federal University. But someone like you, Mr. Falano, you enjoyed free education. In fact, the stories of having half a chicken for lunch uh, is all over the place. And how you enjoy the kind of education uh, that was available in your own time. Um, but, but the question is, I would like us to be practical and look at where the problem, who has the problem, where we can place the problem, then talk about the solution. Where would you place the problem? And how do we resolve it going forward? Now, I'm not going to blame the masses of our people. I will blame the members of the ruling class that have a connivance with imperialism embark on systematic underdevelopment of our country unless you get it right you're not going to get the right solutions for instance chapter two of the constitution and that chapter was in the 1979 constitution chapter two of the 1999 constitution provides that the economy of Nigeria shall be managed by Nigerians to promote the happiness and prosperity of our people. The wealth of our country, the commonwealth, shall not be managed in such a way that it is concentrated in the hands of a few or a group. The commanding height of the economy shall be controlled by the government. Section 14 provides that the security and welfare of our people shall be the primary purpose of governance. For me, that is where to begin from. Once you abandon the constitutional model, the constitutional duties of the government, and you embrace neoliberal policies, that are subversive of the constitution. You get it wrong. Whereas the constitution provides that there shall be employment opportunities for Nigerians and young people who are not employed, gainfully employed, or who are not employed at all, will be paid unemployment benefits. There will be adequate housing, adequate security, Access to education for all are sundry. Now, how do we fund the social services, you know, 
outlined by the Constitution, you cannot do so under a peripheral capitalist system that we operate. And so, what, what is the way forward? It is to ensure that our people are mobilized to take the political destiny of our country, their own political destiny, in their own hands. And you are not going to do that by turning Nigeria into a dumping ground for all manners of goods. I mean, um, your guest was speaking about the exchange rate of the, you know, dollar vis-a-vis -vis the Naira. Oh, we need to export. Export to where? <laughs> Produce goods in your country to meet the requirement of 200 million people. That is one of the largest markets in the world. Mobilize our people to produce enough food for Nigerians. Refine your crude oil to satisfy local demand. When you have excess, you can export. Control the exchange rate of your of your of your of your of your currency and not dollarize the currency in a way that you have reckless devaluation and there is no way you are going to do that if you import all manners of goods in nigeria goods that can be produced in the country so you turn the country into a dumping ground two you cannot have double or multiple exchange rates and you expect to have stability you know in the exchange rate so if I can go to the central bank, collect a million or ten million dollars at a chain rate, I take it to the market without producing anything. I become instant billionaires. Section 44 of the of section 44 of 44 subsection 3 provides that all the resources of our country, mineral resources, oil and gas, solid minerals, shall be taken over by the government and managed in the interest of our country. Now, there's no provision for taking over uh, uh, oil blocks and giving them to individuals who have no fund or technology to develop them, who will simply walk, you know, outside the country to lease the blocks and they become instant billionaires. So that is not the way we are going to run the country. So if you want to get it right, we must start by mobilizing our people. You know, we must start by forming groups in the country, cooperatives, mobilize the people to produce food, mobilize the people to manufacture goods, encourage the people, make funds available for young people to be gainfully employed. All right. And then the sky right, so can me, be the limit. Me, right now, Nigerians yeah, are running let, many countries. Let me take you up uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Falano, on two very important issues. The first uh, that our next issue is the request by the members of the parliament, uh, members of the Senate and members of the House of Representatives uh, asking the president to declare bandits terrorists. You've made your position known in a statement you released earlier today uh, how important do you think this is? The call is totally uncalled for. We prefer respect to the legislators. Section 2 of the Terrorism Prevention Act as amended provides or sets out acts of terrorism. What is going on in the Northwest? Kidnapping of people, including children, including primary school pupils, downing gates of the military, destroying properties, blocking roads, annexing part of the country, are all acts of terrorism. All acts of terrorism, as defined by law. So I, I don't need to call the president to make a declaration. What the National Assembly should be doing is to draw the attention of the president, in fact, summon the attorney general, and ask why section two of the uh, Terrorism Act is being uh, 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 disregarded. Because you must also recognize, you must realize or recall that in 2014, 
when the Chibok gangs and later uh, in 2017, the Dapshi girls were abducted, it was agreed by the government and the media that these were acts of terrorism. We, we call them terrorists. We didn't call them bandits. So if kidnappers in the Northeast are terrorists, how can kidnappers in the Northwest be bandits? And let's look at the law. There's no provision for bandits in our law. We have provision for terrorists. And that is why we must ensure, and the media, we want to appeal to the media. If the government wants to continue to deceive itself, by talking of bandits, the media must please stop describing terrorists as bandits. Once the National Assembly members, the media, and victims of terrorist acts in our country agree that those who are making life impossible for them, those who are uh, frustrating them from enjoying peaceful life, are terrorists. The government will be well, compared. Well, is there any reason do you think, Mr. Falana, move against that the, the federal terrorists. government is not declaring them terrorists? Could there be any reason why they have not been uh, tagged? No, the terrorists? federal government. Well, well, if you understand that uh, there is a lot of selective arrest, selective persecution of hardy criminals in our country, you'll be able to uh, uh, place uh, what is going on in proper perspective. For instance, in May this year, the Rambo Attorney General of the Federation, a Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami said, did announce on his own that we have arrested and we have detained 400 sponsors of Boko Haram uh, sect. Furthermore, I mean, a week later, it was also announced that 800 terror suspects have been arrested and they were going to be arraigned once the industrial action of uh, the judicial staff was called off. The strike was called off three months ago. Nobody has explained to Nigerians why the terror sponsors and the terror suspects have not been arraigned in any court of law. What is more, we are now told, oh, based on pressure, that you have to publicize the names of these terrorists. Oh, the government has just realized that it will be prejudicial to fear trial or fear here. Meanwhile, the same government routinely publishes or name the same government names and shames alleged looters of the treasury. The same government encourages the police and other security agencies to parade I'm robbery suspect, uh, internet, uh, fraudsters, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to sponsors of terror, we are told, oh, it will be, uh, 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 we'll be going against their right to fear again if we publish their name. So we must have one standard for all criminal suspects in our country. We must treat equals equal in our country and unless you are ready to do that you make a mockery of the rule of law all right so let me take you up on uh, another uh, matter uh, probably where we anchor tonight and is uh, the reaction of the northern governors uh, when they finished their meeting in kaduna with some traditional rulers and uh, they their position on what their counterparts in the southern region of the country uh, the position they had in Lagos, in Enugu, uh, and in Asaba. Uh, what's, your, what's your thinking, or what do you make of the position of the Northern Governors? They talked about the 2023 election and the issue of the rotation. They spoke about um, uh, the issue of uh, VAT, and they said it's unconstitutional. What are your views on these issues that they raised? Sure. Uh, 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 I think we need to be fair to ourselves. From what I read in the paper, the Northern Governors Forum was reacting to the position of the Southern Governors Forum. And for me, and I have expressed this view elsewhere, 
the Northern Governors Forum and the Southern Governors Forum should operate more under the platform of the Nigerian Governors Forum. There's no basis for the division. But if you read the communique of the Northern Governors Forum, and I read it, and I think the last paragraph, you know, is to the fact that the Northern Governors were adopting, once again, they were reiterating the adoption of the National uh, uh, Livestock Transformation Plan of the Federal Government. And they were saying no to open grazing. That has been the position of Southern Governors. On VAT, they are bound to disagree. And the disagreements are on both sides. Apart from Lagos and Rivers, maybe or your state, seriously speaking, in the South, majority of the states are going to be worse off if the judgment obtained by the River State Government is implemented. So, apart from five states, four states, and the federal capital territory, that is Lagos, Rivers, Kano, and Oyo State, the remaining 32 states contribute 13% to divert revenue from that, whereas the four states, Lagos in particular, contributes about 55%. So you have the four states and the federal capital territory contributing 87%. So north and south, there will be problems. And that is where we are. Some of us believe. I mean, I belong to an organization. You know, the eternity political movement. The position is that you must, you must have... Even if you are going to have a central collection system, we should be thinking, we should be debating the distribution of the revenue. Secondly, we must also expand the revenue base. If companies are pulling out of Nigeria, they are relocating to neighboring countries because the ease of doing business in those countries is less problematic because you can guarantee relative Stability, electricity, stability of electricity in those countries. Why can we not improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria? Why can we not guarantee some stability in the electricity sector? You know, I haven't spent billions of dollars. So I think these are the issues to address. The other one, the movement, our movement is also saying, that come. According to the Minister of State and the Minister of Solid Minerals, Mr. Oga, some private jet owners have become smugglers. They are using their jets to smuggle solid minerals out of the country, particularly gold. And a yearly now, we are losing revenue in that sector to the tune of about $9 billion. Again, this must be addressed. We can't run a country of smugglers. You are losing uh, 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 billions of dollars to uh, uh, smugglers in the area of solid minerals with respect to uh, 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 fuel. We are losing, we are at the consumption of, according to uh, the government, Nigerians are consuming 38 million liters of fuel daily, whereas we are told by the government that 42 million liters of fuel are smuggled out of the country by criminal elements. So how can you run a country of smugglers? You then impose excruciating economic problems on the people because you want to, you cannot stop smuggling. So, you know, these are the issues that I believe the governors in the north and the south should be addressing because the money they are marked for smugglers or for smuggling is taken from the federation account. So our governors must be up and doing and ensure that you address the leakage in the federation account. The other one is the NMPC. Right now, the NMPC is being on bond. I've not heard any any statement. Not a whimper from the governors. Whereas the NMPC was established, right. not by the federal government, but by the Federation, Nigeria. Now, 
you are now going to split the NMPC. So what, are you allocating any shares to the states and local government that jointly, you know, funded the NMPC with the federal government? You have the LNG. We have 49% shares in LNG. Right. Again, this LNG was established in 1998. You know, from the Federation account. What that agency, I mean, that organization has given paid to the Federation account is to the tune of over $30 billion. How much has gone to the Federation account? How much has gone to the states and local government? For me, I think these are the areas the governor should be addressing. Finally, on uh, presidency, I'm very reluctant to join issues with those who want the presidency in the south or the north. And I'm going to appeal to the media to assist Nigerians, to challenge those who are reducing the politics of 2023 to a regional affair. We must ask those who want to produce the president or their candidates right. to address the problems of underdevelopment of our country, what would be your position on VAT? What would be your position on access to education for every Nigerian child? What would be your position we, we are totally on going abroad for medical treatment? Yeah. Unless you ask this question. Yeah. But you must ask this question. You. Otherwise, it Mr. becomes a question of, is my turn. And your views tonight. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Well, that's how we end the program today. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm sure Kim Aloe. Enjoy the rest of your evening.